Now, to discuss this further, Salahuddin Ashiru, security expert, joins me now. Thank you, as always, for joining us. Now, just like the Abuja Kaduna train attack, the Undo Church attack has been linked to ISWA. But beyond this intelligence, uh, is it an uphill tax for the federal government to apprehend them? Thank you very much for having me. I think it would be nice to start by saying that uh, what we witnessed on the 5th of June uh, in our war uh, was actually gruesome. It was barbaric and, of course, satanic massacre uh, of scores of worshippers. It tells us one single thing that we're actually drifting towards a very calamitous uh, precipice. Having said that, if you listen to the Minister of Interior and you listen to the Inspector General of Police, you will realize one thing is missing. And that is synergy. And that is one of the biggest reasons why we have not gotten our internal security correctly. There is absence of synergy, information sharing, and they are not working in tandem with one another to be able to coordinate efforts. And of course, it is about who uh, takes the glory. And that in itself has done one single thing. It has further exposed the vulnerability uh, within our security architecture. Human security and human intelligence is completely missing. And it has become a very large scale uh, for those within the security governance corridor uh, to roll out tanks and begin to pursue some kind of uh, uh, unending uh, criminality that uh, does not exist. I'll tell you one thing. There has been intelligence reports uh, for a very long time uh, that uh, there are sleeper cells of ISWAP, ISIS, and Ansaru. And those sleeper cells are spread across Kaduna and Kogi. Uh, Kogi is actually the recruitment ground uh, for most of these uh, terrorist groups. And that is because Kogi is actually uh, bordering over 10 different states. And so it is very easy uh, for them to recruit and those sleeper cells can then be exported into different states uh, across those particular regions. And unfortunately, this information and only one has been there, uh, but nobody is acting on the responses. So, and that is the reason why security governance and human security has actually told us very clearly uh, that uh, the pre-colonial uh, architecture of security has not completely been dismantled. And we need to clearly and continuously work on that and actually have a post-colonial uh, system that takes human security very seriously. The human security in this component uh, will have to do with how we prevent conflict from happening. And in the event that they have happened, how do we begin to immediately uh, put some kind of safety measures, uh, succor, and of course, uh, some kind of uh, background uh, uh, intelligence gathering that helps us to be able to deal with the situation. But you see discordance views, you will see lack of synergy, absence of coordination, and in its entirety, the people will continue to suffer. And that in itself tells us very clearly uh, that uh, we are losing a lot of situation. If you listen to the Minister of Interior uh, from the clip you have just shown, you will realize that there was nothing there was no content in terms of response uh, to what has actually happened. We have gotten it very, very wrong. There has been several security operations in the last uh, one decade in this country that has actually gone over 10 times the original amount. Some of them have become very permanent. And you will realize that the essence for security operations are no longer purposes towards ensuring human security. It is for the political economy uh, that comes with it and, of course, serving the interests of specific matters. And that in itself we need to really take care of. If we don't deal with that, we will not be able to handle the rising cases of threats that is actually dealing with the society. And the second thing I want to actually deal with very quickly is the number of personnel the capability of the institution to be able to fight crime. Most of our personnel and the number are actually distributed to VIPs. And that means that those who actually need security response and personnel presence are lacking it. And that is a very huge issue. We have about 371,000 uh, police, for instance. One quarter or half of the, that number is actually attached to VIPs and the no, remaining numbers are attached to, to multinationals. How on earth do you want to distribute safety when you have actually taken the larger chunk and you have attached them uh, to VIPs? The rest of us are vulnerable and that is why we have a near absence of security governance uh, in this country. We must be able to do Indeed, a Mr. Salaudin, I'm sorry to interrupt you there, but um, it's this much you can take on the matter. But thank you very much for your contribution. Thank you for coming.